So as we continue to look at how population growth impacts our use of natural resources, we also then know that um, pollution will occur. The more natural resources we're using, the more likely we are to have pollution. So just a reminder that if we do recycle, recycling is the process of reusing materials from scrap or waste and reducing the amount of natural resources that must be obtained from the earth. And, you know, along with that goes the, the emissions, just like we looked at before. So water pollution is one type of pollution. We listed several previously. Pollution that comes from one specific site is called point source pollution. There are a few examples of point source pollution that relates to water that I wanted to talk about. Sludge dumping. Sludge itself is the solid waste that's removed from raw sewage. So a lot of times at white wastewater treatment plants, they'll remove the sludge and then dump it into a water source. If that happens, that sludge can pollute beaches, kill marine life, things like that. Also oil spills would be considered part of the point source pollution because we're looking at specific examples of that. Oil spills, if they're not handled properly, they can, um, if the transports themselves aren't handled properly, they can cause oil spills and that can harm or kill many plants and animals. There is new technology being used now to safeguard against oil spills where oil tankers are now being built with two hulls instead of one. So even if the first hull is breached, they still have another hull. Non-point source pollution, we said, top comes from many sources rather than from a single site. So with non-point source pollution, you're not going to be able to identify where it came from. For example, trash dumping. Dumping trash in the deeper parts of the ocean is a common practice with many countries. It's very possible that you would be able to identify which country was doing it if you saw it in the process. Otherwise, you wouldn't, and trash thrown in the ocean can be harmful to those ocean organisms. And then there are certain things you have to have for a healthy water system. One of those is your levels of dissolved oxygen, DO. And they have to be below four milligrams per liter in fresh water because if it's not that, it can cause stress and possibly death for organisms in the water. And there are things that can happen that can change those levels of dissolved oxygen. Nitrates are naturally occurring compounds of nitrogen and oxygen, but if you have elevated nitrate levels in the water, that can also be harmful to organisms. Alkalinity refers to the abilities um, to neutralize acid in water and acid rain and other acid wastes can harm aquatic life. If there's not that right balance with alkalinity and the acid rain, then you're going to end up with water that's too acidic for different animals. The sewage treatment plants are facilities that can actually clean waste materials in water that comes from sewers or drains. Primary treatment, where the dirty water comes in, it's passed through a really large screen to catch the solid objects. And then in the secondary treatment, the water sent into an aeration tank where it's mixed with oxygen and bacteria. The bacteria feed on the wastes and use the oxygen. Chlorine's added before the water is finally released into the water source. So the bacteria feed on the waste and then chlorine is added in before it's finally released. Another way to clean wastewater, um, if you live out like in the country where you don't have a town or city water source, you might be using a septic tank. And a septic Septic tank is simply a large underground tank that cleans the wastewater from a household. Pretty simple how it works. The water flows into the tank from the pipes and the heavier sludge like um, 
sinks down to the bottom and then it allows somewhat of that water to like seep out into the soil and then that allows it to get cleaned by the soil and such all around it. Water in a home is less than 8% of the water in that we're using in our homes is used for drinking. The rest is used for flushing toilets, doing laundry, bathing, watering our lawns, plants, you know, washing cars. Overall, where the water goes, about 19% of the water used in the world is used for industrial purposes. And water is used to manufacture goods, cool power stations, clean industrial products, extract mineral, and generate energy for factories. Many people are going to save. Remember that conservation, you know, using only what you need, trying to make it last longer. Many people save water by installing low-flow shower heads, low-flow flush toilets. Uh, those are kinds of things that are going to use less water. Also, some people plant only native plants in their yards because they don't need the extra watering that other plants need. Your behavior can also help you conserve water, take shorter showers, avoid running the water while you're brushing your teeth. That's the end.